I can tell you. I can give it to you. Um, any agenda, agenda changes or additions? Yeah, we're going to have add to number one, please. Presentation from the SBA on disaster loans. And I can move to approve the minutes from July 17th, 2023. Do you have a visit? Motion. I'll second. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, just one typo. Um, under the John. Um, uh, I have a T.O. added to the last name, my last name. <laughs> oh, there's no space there. Okay, thanks. Got it. Uh, I've got another one on the same thing. I've got, yeah, I don't know who Laura Peters is. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> not <laughs> Thank you so much. Got it. Thank you very much, John. Yep. It's in the uh, uh, adjourn motion. Oh, okay. Okay, all those in
there are applications that are in process. Again, we encourage folks to come in uh, and at least apply. It takes about three weeks for the application to really to get processed through if all of your paperwork is in order. And it's pretty standard paperwork to apply, like normally applying for a loan, uh, with, you know, with a bank, you know, with a credit check. Uh, we look to see if you're, you, know, you have the ability to repay. You're going to need your, your uh, uh, EIN number, you know, uh, taxes, most recent complete tax return from your most recent year that you have a comprehensive tax return for that. Uh, and then that information gets processed to work with someone out of our center. Eventually get assigned to a loan officer and you can get your first payout within three to five days after that uh, of signing the documents. So in about a three week process, you could get a $25,000 first payout. And again, you know, the limit can be up to $2 million for businesses. And like I mentioned, the other ones, and that is going to spell out here on the tax sheet. There is no fee to apply and there is no obligation to take the loan to a mortgage. Um, by the same token, if you are the first year is deferred, you're going to defer interest free. So we really want to help you know the monitors you know, get back up on their feet and uh, you know, consider working with us. We do work hand in glove uh, with uh, FEMA. You know, FEMA applies and uh, uh, provides the grants, and then and then folks are referred over to us. Um, the home of the donors are referred over to us for the loans that we want. So like I mentioned, we're at the center. We've got about eight centers here in the state. We've got two here nearby, and we encourage anyone to either come into the center and meet the facility, or we're going to work in seven days a week. Um, you can also apply online at the Advanced Loan Assistance at SBA.gov, or you can call our 800 number and get a paper application mailed to you. But I know with the situation with the mail right now, that may not be you know, the best option, but we do have that. Where did you get the office for in North Carolina? Uh, in North, uh, down the road at D, the exact address. Uh, the agricultural building. Yeah, the building at 29 Sunset Drive. So right on, right on. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I mentioned, currently now we're seven days a week, eight to five. Uh -huh. um, as things go, you know, as, as the declaration, um, Proceeds many times, you know, we'll, we'll cut back on Sunday hours um, in these areas that we But right now, we have open seven days. We've been here about three weeks. Um, and the deadline we apply for the physical uh, damage loans is September 12th. So that's, you know, just, just about over a month. Um, so we encourage you to at least get your application started on that. So that is there some way we can have this link to our website, please? Um, is the, I, yeah, I'm looking at you to think, where can I put it? How can I do this? Can I get back to you on that, Judy? Sure. Okay. Just so people can have access to yep. find them. Yeah, and I, Judy, I'd be happy to help you. A lot of the communities that I work with, they take the electronic versions of everything that I have paper. Um, they either they put together, put together either a splash page. You know, there's links to our Facebook, yep. Facebook, yep. or front porch forum. Yeah. So, we have to go over to you on that if you want to know from that regard. Okay. That'd be great. Does anyone have any questions? The only other thing I'd ask is that we're uh, available seven days a week. Is it just basically walk in? Do you need an appointment or? Very good question. We're not we're not taking questions. We're not taking appointments right now. We're not that busy. Uh, we're not. Now I understand FEMA may be setting it up to where they have appointments. Uh, uh, something that I heard on a conference call recently. But now you really don't need an appointment. We have I have the road here when I was here last week during one where we had three customer service reps. So uh, if there's a backlog, they'll they'll go over the board. Pretty flexible in that regard. And you say FEMA is in the same building as you, or is there someplace different? Um, here in Morrisville, um, I think they have a FEMA rep who would come in, but it, that's not a disaster recovery center. So a disaster recovery center is what FEMA operates. That's where that's where they are. We are other partners like the Red Cross and, and other volunteer organizations. It's a bigger operation. Our business recovery center here is just us. Um, and I think I saw a, a couple of reps from uh, a USDA as well, or at least their materials. So it's 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 trying to be a one-stop shop for folks. So yeah.
Can I get your business card before you leave, please? Your business card? That'd be great. Thank you. Um, excuse me. Um, I can't hear anything. I can hear Judy perfect, but anybody else is really muffled. Yeah, um, we're, having, we're having audio difficulties at the moment. I'm working on the mixer and I'm working with GMA TV to get it straightened out while I take notes and run the meeting. So I'm, I am working on it. Thank you so much for bringing this to our attention, Kathy. Yeah, because I didn't even hear a thing that that gentleman just said. But okay. Pardon? No. No, I can't. I'm trying. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then we're moving on to uh, number one, um, issue under user review and through a right away permit application for 651 Elmore Street. So this, uh, yeah. Kevin's going to talk about that from the highway department. Okay, Maris, highway superintendent. So this is up on Elmore Street Hall. Uh, they came to me last uh, winter in February after requesting to do this. And it was not an emergency then, so they pushed off until now. Recording stopped. Don't mind me. Just keep going. Into the highway in order to repair this break in line. So they put it off until now. It's just like it needs to happen. This water and water get involved in this, or is it just our highway? No, it's water gets involved. It's the sewer line. Coming out of their house. Are we involved in this? Is no. that what you're talking about? No. There's no cost on the There's no cost on that stuff. No, no, they'll cut it out, they'll fade out, repair it, go back in, tamp it down, and then we got all the services. They're not cutting off the entire road. No. No, they're, they're just going to be moving out into the common portion of the highway. They won't be out. Recording in progress. It really shouldn't take more than a couple days. And they're here today, too. Do have any errors and stuff? 
on the errors and omission certificate, the listers do write down the reason why. So there, there is information there on the front page of the certificate as to what they've done and why. Um, so you can read through that. Yeah, I was going to bring that up under the discussion. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
we all know what we are given um, as a rate in the current position. The long term policy is provided at that time. Um, so, in the city of Zoom, unfortunately, COVID hit, the industry has changed, the pay scales have changed, and the town of Morristown is still behind the times with it. Um, I've addressed this and addressed this and addressed this um, in multiple <coughs> meetings with the select board, and I don't blame the select board. It needs to be a part of the administration and select board working together and figuring out a way to maintain our employees, but it's not just about pay. Um, his resignation letter and mine has spoken about environment. So there's a couple of different issues there. Um, but for me, I can't leave, I don't have that authority to negotiate. And it was shared with his supervisor. Um, and that's all I'm going to speak to. But I think we have down the road, we really need to look at your pay scale and your pay structure. That's a Individual questions. And there was nothing preventing him from sharing his concerns with us individually in an email or a letter left here. No, I think he did um, share with his. He did email. understand the process. Once he understood the process, he didn't understand that the uh, confidentiality that uh, the HR department has. So once he understood that, then he started speaking to me. So, right, but yes. nobody else, but nobody else on the board. I wasn't privy. I, I didn't and and, and um, there was an immediate the day after I responded to his email to explain the process of how people increased on um, the pay scale um, and invited and welcomed a conversation. Um, and wasn't um, we never got there. Um, not because the attempt on my part wasn't there. Right. I don't think anyone needs to be like, I feel like I'm really crossing the line here. Because confidentiality is a yeah. really important piece yeah. for me. office were getting paid more than he was and here is a man that's out every day uh, and not getting the benefit of your longevity pay policy i think that was concerning too and uh, he was getting paid less and and now he's getting a fair share so uh, it's something that looks a lot good it's interesting that you have more information than i have so but, i find it interesting um, any I other discussion? So. John Harris, so is this the individual with all these credentials and everything that was getting paid $18 an hour for roughly? Uh, he was 23. 23. Okay, thank you. 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 Okay, Cost of living that was just provided to the staff um, was an important, had an important impact on our wage scale, and it did bring us closer um, and in line with other municipalities and other positions. Um, the parent clinic, I'm not going to speak of the individual, but that position right now is actually being paid almost close to $26 an hour. Um, and other agencies are roughly in the 27 to 30 in the private sector. If you look at other municipalities, that position is in line. Um, and that position is not being paid more than some of our other positions, uh, the team coordinator, the rec coordinator. So that information that was just provided was inaccurate. So are you saying that the, the uh, longevity pay that went to all employees was also uh, provided for the EMS? The only individuals that do not um, receive that are part-time employees. They get the COLA. All employees, all full-time employees get the cost of living, the COLA plus the staff. So um, he receives that every year that any other employee, that paramedic receives every increase that any other full-time employee did. I don't know where the information that is uh, being shared this evening comes from, but it's inaccurate. He was scheduled to receive the 1023. 
And he did. He did receive it. He did receive it. Okay, sorry. All full-time employees receive the cost of living as a job. He is no different. No employee is treated any differently. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And Mr. Shawnee was giving the nine acres part to his bookkeeper and part to his right hand guy that does the maintenance with him. So as you can see on page, the next page 21, there are two house lots going in. So we're not changing it from a public to a private. It was a driveway. Correct. It's a driveway, and now it's because they're going to be there's one house lot, and now they're about to be three. And he's a road name for nine one goals. Okay. And I can't approve. I can't approve that. I'm waiting on. Although I think they're starting to work some of the groundwork. I can't approve a permit until you guys name the road because okay. permits are done by roads, and I have no right to name it because I can't assign it anywhere. I can assign it to whatever road. So okay. this is the first step of the process. The uniform developer is going to be private, and I can issue a permit for the house. And that will go up tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, waived fee permit for $130 for Memorial County Conservation District. Hi, I'm Tom Thomas, Zoning Administrator. Uh, this is my chip that goes to the town clerk. I'm not sure we can afford to waive it in any days since we have no money, but the normal <coughs> process is we waive uh, zoning fees, and Sarah corresponds with her smaller recording fee for nonprofits. This permit is for a pavilion for the uh, County Conservation District. It's like a place to meet. When they have camps that under uh, undercover when there's a uh, when it's raining. This is on, on cold milk, right? correct? Yes. So it's one hundred fifteen dollars and twenty cents for the zoning fee. I've already issued the permit. Sarah hasn't recorded the permit yet. I assume she's waiting for the either fee to be paid or the fee to be waived. And this fifteen dollars recording fee that we have to start to waive. She usually follows course what you do. Yep. Thank you. Any other discussion? Wise to be deleting funds from the from the grand list or the funding that comes into the town, but even though it's 130 dollars, I mean I see that the town is talking about a local options tax of I don't know maybe a penny per dollar or one percent. I mean you know how many dollars has to be spent to make up that 130 dollars? I mean you know everybody's coming to the town wanting things for free. I don't get anything for free. I pay my taxes, and I think that everybody, especially you folks at the board. As custodians of my money and our money, should look to try to cut back on some of these things because, as you see, the town budget just keeps escalating. It doesn't ever seem to shrink. I know mean, you folks have done your darndest to make this thing pass. I mean, look, we got to quit giving away things. And you realize it's a nonprofit. I realize it's a nonprofit. Yes, I certainly do. But I mean, it's a nonprofit. The nonprofits are already getting a lot of stuff for free. And so I think that you know this is a small token that they should have to bear to help out with everybody else. Todd, do we have any idea how many of these we get a year? Sorry. Do we have any? Todd, I'm guessing two to three yeah, at most. Say one or two. I think it's our second one this year, maybe. Are we close that? We went this, sec this is our second one this year. Yeah, what was the last one? The Habitat for Humanity. Um, yeah, the, the fees for the, the new house on the street, yeah. Corn Maple yeah. Hall. So this is the second that was that. year. I guess it's three, three a year. That one was probably $300. That's my guess. Okay. There's four. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> up a good point. I'm just wondering if we should, you know, from the time, but look at this that perhaps we. Do a fifty percent empty, you know, make some kind of uh, that they pay fifty percent or something. I mean, I, I hear the argument. It's, so I guess Laura, just knowing what happens out there. Yeah, I know. This is only this is just up the road a little ways. I don't know what their revenue stream is. <laughs> I don't know what they're bringing in. Know what kind of what they're doing to, you know, mm -hmm. to offset uh, their own budgets? Like, what are they giving back? 
because this, I mean, we're not giving them money, we're just not collecting money, just to be clear. Yeah. And we're not giving them taxpayer money, we're just not collecting revenue. So yeah. there, there's a slight difference there. It would be interesting to know what this group is doing. And you know that they run a lot of educational programs up there. My guess is they probably do a lot of it for free. The most volunteer, I'm pretty sure. And probably entirely volunteer. But I don't know that. And I know that when this went in years ago, about 20 years ago, that was probably entirely volunteer at that point. I think I might add the fact that, you know, if you take a look at uh, special articles at town meeting, you know, we were, we were requested over $100,000 worth of special requests from a variety of different organizations. Um, I think that, you know, if you want to you know, begin a conversation about what you find and what you don't find, um, I am comfortable in donating you know, hundred dollars or more for organizations like Habitat for Humanity, the Seminole County Conservation District. Um, what they provide in the greater community is significant. Um, and, uh, I do not see that as an onerous uh, burden for uh, this community or this board to approve. I think that um, the, the bigger question is, you know, uh, the other asks in this community that show up at town meeting. I think that's a separate conversation. But uh, for this purpose tonight, uh, I have no issue with, with doing this. Tony, <clears throat> Cody, Cody Hill. I agree with Mr. Ferris. I brought that up twice, Chris. Uh, these people that want money should come here. They should be sitting right here if they want money. Twice a year. It's not going to hurt them to tell us what they're doing with the money and where they're going with the money. That's all I got to say. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. To me, in my experience in my former life um, in the library, um, we did have um, organizations that were requesting money to, to uh, come before the board. And we also required them to speak at town meeting about why they were requesting. We don't have that option anymore because we don't have a town meeting. We'll be all in the ballot. Um, but I think that um, it shouldn't be a given. Um, and I think that um, they're, they have the eligibility to be on the morning if they um, uh, submit a petition to be so, just like anything else. We have enough people to sign a petition they can be on that ballot. Um, but I think that um, it's something that should be discussed at the board level during the budget discussion, just so that everybody understands what they're going to the table and why they're asking for that. Come here tonight instead of talking. Excuse me, Tony, you want to speak from the mic? I'm done. Okay, thank you. You want me to have anything else? I'm done. Any other discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Who can abstain? Okay, one abstention. So this is uh, in regards to the police department. One of the many things we do is respond to residential and commercial burglar alarms. The uh, vast majority of those end up being false alarms. In the past, uh, we, we charge for false alarms. You get one free one, and then the second false alarm within six months, we charge $25. And the third uh, and beyond that, we charge 40 Every six months, we compile the alarms and we submit it to the finance office and they bill these, most of these 
um, box stores and so forth. There's some residential, but I'm glad to guess it's more commercial. And so we bill them every six months. While the finance office was doing the billing for the past six months, they noticed that the state of Vermont is charging um, a little more money than we are. They're charging $50 for the second false alarm and 75 for the third one and beyond. So I feel that we should, just like we raised our fingerprinting fee last year, we should also be raising this fee to keep up with times. Um, Gasoline's more expensive to drive with these alarms than they were back when this was created. So uh, I don't feel we're going above and beyond and charging too much. I think we're just being consistent with uh, other agencies in the state. And then on the change in the um, draft alarm, you have that? Yeah, so you have one in the file that's ready to be signed. Okay. As Jason mentioned, it's just the two prices that are changing. So if the board's good with that, you have one to sign tonight. If not, it can come back to the table in two weeks. All right. Thank you. This go um, just a point of uh, just a question for you. Um, in the past, um, the success rate of collecting these fees. So in the last two years, we've increased that success rate to almost one hundred percent. It took a little bit of follow up from the police department, with the finance office, in here back, but. Uh, well, I'm not sure about the last round, but I know the round before that we had everything come back. I would make a motion to uh, uh, for the increase in charges for call calls, alarm calls, uh, going from $25 for uh, second call alarm, and then $40 to $15.75 for second call alarm. Discussion? Are we still um, giving people a buy for the first time? Yep, the first time's free. Okay. And any discussion? I'd like to say thank you, Jason, for bringing this to us. Yeah. yeah, and I want to credit Stacy with the finance office. She's the one that discovered this and brought it to my attention. So kudos to her. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Number eight, the member from Planning Council. Can we Hi, it's the Todd Thomas, the planning director at this time. Uh, Mr. McGee has not met the attendance policy and has been non communicative. So uh, the planning council voted unanimously to ask the trustees and the select board to remove him. This is the first part of the process. The trustees have been working on the 15th. That's on the Do we have a precedent for this kind of news? Do you remember this happening before? Uh, I've been here while the select board we were, we were almost the entire planning council before it was the planning commission then. So yes. Um, uh, this is it's been many years. I don't think I've seen someone get removed for attendance in more than a decade now. So it's been a long time. There's some I imagine some extenuating circumstances here, but if you're not showing up, you're not communicating, there's nothing else we can do. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We need a, I need a board member. Thank you. I would make a motion to remove um, to be member of the planning council. Mm -hmm. so, a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Planning council letter regarding adopting a little type. Can you just make sure you uh, advertise that and make sure you're already on it as soon as possible? Because you open seat. We have no one on the list of the open seat, so we need to solicit an interest for the open seat. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, can I have some letter regarding adopting local option rules, meals, and alcohol tax? I'll do it. Are you, are you on to do it? You go. Yeah, you signed the letter. I wrote it. Uh, so the planning package, you, you all have a letter, page 29, your meeting package, uh, examining ways for the town to raise additional revenue. Uh, this is a this is a proposal of the planning council on page 30 brought to you in 2018. It was rejected that time. In 2018, we used to charge a business equipment tax. Uh, the polls at the time was to drop the business equipment tax, which you did, replace it with the 1% of local rooms and local rooms, meals, and alcohol tax. 
you fail to take the second step. So we're again asking the select board consider adopting a local option tax one percent from the mills out call. The nice part about that tax is it's largely paid by the out towners, people who don't reside here, and people who can afford to decide to go to pizza. So if I decide to go to Lost Nation or a pizza main for dinner, I'm saying that one percent of my bill, my fifty dollar bill at pizza main fifty cents and go to the town. I can afford that. Uh, as long as you're standing there, um, I'm assuming that um, this would require a uh, charter to be developed for the town. Is that correct? Or to revise the village charter work with the trustee in the village charter. So I prefer that, that method just because it's easier to put an addition on a house than it is to build a house. So how would that work? You also talk to the trustees about who, how the revenue, uh, how the revenue flows, and who gets what. So do they have to expand? Um, the village at all to accommodate that? Uh, I, so, on the two list in the town plan that you didn't vote for, because you weren't here that, but the majority of this board, actually, you weren't. You're part of it, yes. uh, is to amend the village charter anyway. Uh, as you probably know from page two and three of the town plan, we waste $120,000 to $150,000 a year because we can't figure out what Morrisville and Morris Town. So, everything that Morrisville owns outside of Morrisville, so what Morrisville, when they own the high, the um, the water tank up on Trumbull Hill, taxable. They own the substation on Morristown Corners Road, taxable. Every utility pole they own outside of Morrisville, taxable. Uh, the hydro station Katie's Falls, taxable. Before Act 60, it wasn't a big deal because the money was just changing hands. But now with Act 60, two thirds of, or 60%, depending on what the budget ends up being, of what Morrisville is paying the taxes in Morristown, it shifts straight to Montpelier right out of this community. It's, I think it's last settled at $120,000 a year. It's real money every year. It's millions of dollars. It's something that needs to be fixed. So in the town plan is uh, an immediate need to appoint some trustees in the select board to really appoint a charter committee to update the village charter, to expand it to include areas where the water and sewer is, uptown, uh, Hannaford's, Price Chopper, and include things like the water tank, or paying tax on our water, the electric substations on Trombley Hill, Morristown Corners, and then the uh, hydro right around the village. I mean, there's no, there's no proposal here to extend uh, the village into Sterling Valley or City Group. It's, it's the developed area, which makes a lot of sense. And that way you can save real money every year from running each other. Can you, do you have the ability to sort of spot and zone those areas, or do you have to have to be contiguous to those areas? Well, it'd be contiguous. Right now, the village, I mean, the village ends on Harold Street on the north, uh, the river on the west by Green Mountain Raider, the short of it. On the east, it's all the way up to like what used to be Mud City Kids. It's the daycare by the village wells. Uh, and on the south, it's Rock Art is outside the village, but the curving gas stations in the village on the south side. So the goal is here. Uh, the goal would be to expand the village, make it a little bit bigger in the village charter, and then kind of offset some of those tax losses that we're saying on here every year. As part of this, I think it makes good sense to try to kill two birds with one stone. And in terms of doing this, adding in one percent local option from the meals tax, if that's feasible for you all, and trying to do that, and we can work with the trustees and who gets what share and how to collect that that way. Or you start you start fresh and we'll do it with a town charter, but when you have a town charter and village charter, if it conflicts, who supersedes? I don't know how that works in the town and village charter. I'm sure there's an answer to that. I'm sure other teams have done it, but it would be easier to work with the existing charter I have in my office. So we're looking to do this for all of the town, not just the village. Well, I mean, no. If you if you, if you stay in the village boundaries we're talking about, you catch. Uh, uptown, the what we see as well as in the grocery stores, and you're going to catch almost everything other than the Katie's Falls. You know, if you don't extend the village lines to the Katie's Falls high or somewhere, the village can annex parts of the town. The village has grown; their development patterns have grown outside the village. So the idea would be, I think, other than especially if you got more town corners, there's not a lot of restaurants in the town that wouldn't be inside that slightly expanded village lines we're talking about. And you're catching pogies, you're catching the grocery stores, you're catching all these different things. Flat time. Flat time, you'd be catching that because you're getting the, uh, the electric substation on the Morristown Corner Road. Other than that, I mean, there's not much of a town left, other than what we're talking about. So essentially what we're looking at is forming what is called in this letter a 1% local option tax committee. Yes, get them to the model. To take a look. Unless you're opposed to it. The select board shot down last time, so I'm not sure what this board thinks about. This is a totally different board than it was last time. But they're also they're saying there. that if the village, the money, the money raised is going to the village, yeah. not to the town. You'll have to work with the village with that. The village isn't looking to collect that. They're not looking to be government more than they are to do planning and zoning. So work to talk to the trustees, 
I'm sure I'll provide for you. So I think that's the point of the 1% rule of the lot tax community is it would be a combination of village and the town um, legislative bodies or and or uh, some community members as well to, to take a look at this. The key is, is that we would need to format sooner than later to begin to be ready for the legislative session starting in January. Because they, they usually do charter in the spring. So if we've got the craft of whip here and got and some citizens that want to help, I'll help too if need be, uh, get the ball rolling, get this out. In theory, this is approved in the spring. This will be functional for not the budget you're working on, but for next year, July 1st of 2024 and forward. And that the 1% this would raise could be 120, $150,000 a year. It's real money. We're a top. I think we're about 20th in the state in terms of receipts for rooms and meals tax. And rooms and meals are we have a lot of restaurants in town. We also have the grocery stores. Everything you buy at the grocery store prepared food. You buy the rotisserie chickens. You buy the set of pre-made um, fruit salads, the pre-made veggie thing, veggie party thing, veggie those all the road, all those pay the the, uh, the rooms and meals prepared food staff. So that would come to back to the town. Those sales for Price Chopper, Hanford, Tomoko are a lot of money. So we're really a big collector. And we're one of the, if you look at other towns in the state, we're one of the only bigger towns that doesn't collect this tax. We're like, oh, we're on our own and not doing it. Uh, what's your sense of what this committee might look like? Would there be a little trustee on the committee? Would there be a select board person on there? I, I think it makes sense that at least one of you, yourself. Go, one of you, if you want to be the staff, I could help. Yes. I think you probably want one trustee and one select board report back because at the end, to make this work, you all get along and work together, which right. I, I think you can. Just a curiosity. Or you do your own charter. Uh, for housing effect food trucks, I mean, are they coming in for the events? I don't know the answer to that. I would guess that it's probably the location of the sales. So if they're in Morrisville, I mean, the state automatically, anytime there's prepared food, there's their flat state's like a 9% tax. Yeah. All we're doing is collecting an extra 1%. So if the state collects it anyway, we just get a check every quarter. I mean, Stowe's checks every quarter are $100,000. I mean, $300,000, $400,000. I mean, Stowe is the biggest one in the state. Offices. But we're not that small. We're, the intent of the time with the business equipment tax is we were letting 100000 or 120 go is to replace it with this, but we dropped the tax and didn't look at the tax. That's so what so. you're talking about is uh, the local option tax, plus if you're increasing the value line of the uh, village, then we're, it's like maybe a 200,000 Am I wrong about that? You know, I think when they looked at it before, I, don't, I think the number is the same. When they looked at it before, they were looking at a Morristown number, everything within Morristown. Um, so I think we still get that number, but we're not, we're not missing anything. It wouldn't increase at all, because I think we captured all the restaurants and grocery stores. But why the property that we're paying taxes on to the state? We're going to capture that as well. So I mean, it'd be really hard to do two charters at the same time. We're already agreed to do the Morrisville charter to stop spending $100,000 plus on the state every year just okay. because we can't figure out what Morrisville or Morristown. It'd be really hard to do a town charter at the same time. Which one controls? How does that work? I think it's easier. That's just me. We would not get the I'm one not staffing to. We would not get the 1% on uh, Airbnb, VRBO, et cetera, that aren't in the village. Correct. Which that's a huge. It's not that. It's, it's, a, it's a number, but it's not that big a number, but it's a number. I mean, because most of the housing is in the village of the surrounding areas, but you're missing some, yes. You're missing some high dollar ones as well. You're missing some high dollar ones. You're missing all of Sterling Valley Road, which is almost all everything. I see one up and down my road. There's probably yep. a lot more than I you are, you're, you are missing those. Yes. Is it worth your own charter? That's a question you have to answer. Does, have the trustees had this discussion yet? No, I'm sorry. Sorry, last question. The last time was fine. The last time um, Steve Benson was here, he proposed against it, and then ironically, Eric was the one on the board who said no, he was dropped as a select board member. So we're making another pitch. I mean, we're not, the planning council is not the taxation authority that you all, we can't appoint boards, you create you appoint boards. I think we're kind of trying to say, hey, this is, we thought this was good in 2018, given everything going on right now with the budget and need for revenue, I think it's a good idea, again, at least to look at. The answer is no, it's okay, it's a different board, so. I think it's a, I think it's a really viable move. Uh, okay, so don't run away from it. Um, but, that team too. Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's a really viable for the town and the village. Um, I think that before we would make any motion to move forward, I'd like to um, 
either a TEMS uh, trustee meeting and have a conversation with the trustees so that we corporately uh, come together on a decision moving forward. Trustees will meet, I think, the 16th. We meet next week if you like to come. I'm sure it's on their agenda if you like. Yeah, I think that I would like to do that. I'll, I'll be there anyway. You want to make some I would like to have a conversation with the trustees and get their input on how they envision this moving forward and that we would come together in a, in a, in a corporate move. I mean, I, I, this independent decision making process doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe I'm just not seeing the bigger picture here, but I think it's a seismic move for this municipality, both in the village and in the town. Um, I think it's very viable to look at. and. Um, Waiting a week and having a conversation with the trustees, I think it makes sense. Um, I think I'm out of bounds and we can make a motion now. Well, I can, I can support you because we're talking about we can't, nothing can really happen until spring of 2024 now. Right? You want to start with the board now, but you, right, need, right. The, you need the legislature to sign off on your charter. Yes. Yes. No. Uh, I agree. But we will not hear enough. Right. If it was to the right, we can start. But it's more, it's, it, it, if you want to do the committee, then you can a vote with the trustees or an affirmation, then we can then you can appoint the committee. Because if you don't, if you just say wait for the trustees, then you're waiting for August 21st to do the thing. So it's actually two weeks. It's not a week. So I, I see two things. Say. One is do we put the committee together? And secondly, what that what, what the makeup of that committee would be. Sure. So at least from my perspective, it'd be good to have a trustee on this committee. If I'm assuming that this committee gets formed, have a trustee on there, have a select board member on there, have yourself on there, and have one additional person on there. So you five, I think. We can have two additional people on there. I was but I'm sure. I just just so you have something to go to the trustees with to begin a conversation. Uh, yeah, a committee of no more than five would certainly make sense. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Sarah Hoskins, town clerk and village clerk. So um, I'm coming up, I'm, tr I'm trying to be positive and not negative, but I'm a logistic queen, like all the things that are running in my head, playing the both roles. Um, I think it's great, Chris. I think it's very important that you go to the um, trustees and talk to them. If you go to the idea of pods, um, to uh, use the village charter and expand it. They're the governing body. They're the ones that are going to make the decision. We will not be making those decisions. And it'll be the village taxpayers, it'll be the village voters that will be voting on all of those changes because even if a committee wants it, ultimately it's the voters that will approve it or not. A, the char charter change, and B, the local option tax. So, um, it's very, very important that the trustees come into this conversation before you get too far into it, if you're going to go to the root with um, doing the charter for that, the village, just just because we're different entities. I think it would behoove us to have a, have a board more meeting with the trustees if it's available to their schedule so that more than just two of us attend that meeting we all hear the conversation and ask questions on the on the dynamics of how this is going to work and it could work. Um, I think it's that important and I think we need to pursue it with some due diligence. We've had in the past a yearly meeting and I think we haven't had one in a couple of years. We missed it last year. Just last year, uh, I was here. We had a meeting. It's usually the second um, Monday of September. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was here last year for that. Um, I'm going to speak up because I've been work, working on this for years and years, looking at this. Um, I am not in favor of joining on with the village. I believe the town needs its own charter and I realize that will extend it, but I don't think it makes any sense to do this um, because of the Airbnbs and all of that. And there are other things that um, the charter will allow us to do, which is look at the appropriations, uh, rent choice voting, all of that's uh, in the legislature at different points. So 
And given the current state of restaurants in this town, I would not push this forward uh, for Tinder. I They are hurting. Um, and if you look at the numbers, I was just reading them across the entire state. Uh, and they're saying that it's um, that it's going to be worse because even though inflation is getting better, uh, people are, have stopped spending. Uh, I know one restaurant in town was down 63% on 4th of July from last year. 4th of July is normally when all the tourists can come in. Um, snow is down across the board. Um, so I think we need to get more restaurants in town. Uh, and by doing this, I think might just actually drive some out. And I have to say, I just went out to dinner with my niece, who's from New York, uh, and it's true. Didn't even think about it. I, on the other hand, was somewhat horrified, um, knowing what uh, I pay um, and looking at the restaurant was not packed. I've yet to be in a restaurant in Morrisville that's packed in a, a waiting line. I was in restaurants in Stowe, um, which this should be packed, and they weren't. And I was at the Alchemist, which normally has a line out their parking lot. So um, I, I just don't think, I think we should take our time. I think we should start a charter, but I think we should start a town charter um, because that's what we're going to need. Um, and then, you know, and look at uh, as bad as we need money. I don't think we're, I think we're cutting off our noses by our face here with this one. Do you think we should start the conversation now with the trustees? I do not. I mean, yeah, let's have a conversation, but I think we need our own charter. I think yeah. we need a town charter. Um, so I don't see pushing this through, um, and especially having, you know, I as a town member, you know, if I go to these meetings, have to wait till the very end to, and then ask permission to speak. And I'm going to hand them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, no, I'm not in. <laughs> I'm not willing to do that. And I know we can set up agreements, but if we're going to spend the time doing this, let's do it right. Get a town charter, which then enables us to enact these other steps that we need. I guess I'd be in favor of beginning the conversation. That doesn't mean we need to act right away. I think, uh, I think, you're, raising good, good. I think you're raising good points about the town and the charter. Given what, given what our town clerk just told us, yeah. that's yeah, that's a that's an issue as well. So I, I'm just kind of wondering. I think it was mentioned that the 16th of September is their next meeting. August, August. 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 next week. Uh, yeah, August First and third Wednesdays. Next week. week. Yes. Yeah. So August 16th. Correct. Um, maybe entertaining the idea of having a very having a. I wonder if they would. Take their regular meeting and chunk out part of it for a joint select board trustee meeting to discuss this. We also have special meetings going on for to talk about the manager. Yeah, this is Monday. Monday night. So let me let me just remind you all. I have to check the calendar if it's going to happen in this room. No, no, and no. also, okay. And also, Wednesday, August sixteenth is the free corn roast. Oh, well. so let me put it out there. <laughs> Uh, and just a quick clarification, Laura, I don't think we need a charter for the social service agencies. It's a select board policy, and I actually have it on the agenda to come this fall and bring um, the, the social service agency policy that we currently have because it was written based on um, the floor town meeting. And now that we're going to be Australia ballot, um, I want to have a conversation with, with you guys if you want to continue your policy as is or make changes. So I, I have some drafts that I plan to bring to you. Oh, okay, thank you. I thought yeah. I was going to be to do charter. Because I know ranked choice is being changed down at the legislature. So yeah, and all, and all, it came this close to passing. So, so it didn't pass. It didn't pass um, because they ran out of time, but I'm on the Secretary of State's Advisory okay. Committee, and they, they're they pretty sure that ranked choice will be brought um, back next. Because um, that's just going to wave, uh, make it eligible for everybody, which would and there is something in legislature too. I reached out to Rich Westland to see where it also didn't um, 
pass and get finalized, but there is some, there was a bill that they were working on to waive the, the charter requirement to go to the local option um, tax. So if that gets enabled next um, that winter and, and rank choice voting, we need a town charter, but we don't know in the legislature what they're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to highlight that in the, that we were suggesting to create a committee, and this could happen as quickly as one year, or it could be that the committee decides, especially with the inclusion of some key business owners and key restaurant owners like uh, Town Man, uh, for example, the former town mm -hmm. member. That it's more appropriate to stage it out for three years. Some sort of plan. That's that would be the, the goal here is that just to create some sort of plan that everyone's agreeable to and that everyone can, on implementation so that it's not just dropped for five years again like it, like it was. Thank you. It's okay. So I think we don't have a motion on the table. I don't think we're gonna have a motion on the table. No motion? Just discussion. Should you get some, I'm sorry. There's one question or um, Young Paris. I think if we're trying to raise revenue here, what we really need to look at is the cost of permits. I don't know what I know several years ago it was like 10 cents a square foot for a permit here in Morrisville. I just talked to a friend of mine who lives in Georgia, Vermont, and he has a seven acre plot to build a single family home, and his permitting fee is over four thousand dollars. So we could be losing a lot of money here in the permit process because if somebody wants to build an apartment perhaps or whatever, I mean, those are the people that should be paying up front for some of these services. And I think we could be losing a lot. I don't know if that's true or not. But we've talked to them. <laughs> I doubled the zoning fees two years ago. I helped with the library issue. We were going to cut the library's funding. I remember I went my office printed on the fee schedule, you voted the fee schedule, that was for the library's funding. Um, we're 40 cents a square foot for new residential, 20 cents a square foot for uh, accessory, you know, like adding a garage or adding a water room or something like that. So okay. our fees are doubled compared to where they were a couple of years ago. I offered to raise them again this year and the board didn't take me up on that, but I can raise them again if you'd like me to. Right. How to raise my fees, it's, it's up to you. I don't set the fee schedule you do. My fees are lower than they should be, but we, only, we doubled them two years ago, so at some point, I need to graduate that increase before you just have shock and kill everyone in one year. The average home, I'd say, if I'm doing a new single family home, when they come across your desk, they're probably about five or six hundred dollars for a single family home. Awesome. Agreed, yes. It's a one it's a one time charge. Even even the uh, large apartment buildings, they're they're also, they're paying four thousand, five thousand. You can set a cap on your fees. So a couple of years ago the select board cap fees at five thousand dollars, my fees. And some of the larger buildings are getting capped out, so they're not paying their full cost as a cycle for a cap line. So can I make a suggestion? Um, would you be willing to revisit the uh, kind of fee structure so that as we begin to formulate the 24 25 uh, budget, um, that we could um, take that under advisement in terms of revenue? Of course, happy to use especially in a couple of weeks. I'm buried at the moment, but given a couple of weeks time, you will fall. I think we just got to be careful that uh, this isn't a warrant item, so yeah, talking exactly. talk yeah. to these. I was going to say, yeah. we should warn it. You can, you can still give me direction I work with you, so okay. duly noted. I'll have it from the fall. So, where are we on this? Are we tabling this? Are we putting committed together? I would like to see a joint meeting between the trustees and the select board. They're meeting next week on the 16th. You know, we're meeting on the 14th already. So what we signed up for, um, if there's some um, compelling reason to move this thing forward, we should maybe meet with it next week. Uh, I think knowledge is power, so beginning the conversation and then deciding what the timeline is going to be from there, whether it's, as Mr. Hancock has expressed, uh, over a several year process, or whether we even hit the ground running in September, I just think that we need to begin the conversation with the trustees, uh, see what they, um, what their input is, and then we can revisit whether we want to go um, charter, or whether we want to uh, hire new the trustees, but I think having a conversation with them first puts us both on the same table and in the same process. Okay, so you want to put something in the motion? I would just say that we would, um, Ask that either they join us at this here at this uh, room is available, or if they want to schedule 
they'll send you a regular meeting where you can go to their meeting that they can block out if you need to talk to us about it. And you can make that a work in progress when you work best. But then you're not available. Well, my question when, when, the, when does that trustees meeting usually begin? 5 30. How long have they got? 90 minutes tops. They're pretty quick. An hour. I just don't, I don't think we should do it the 16th. I think there's too much going on. I could do it at 7 o'clock. I could do it at 6 I, I can't speak for uh, Scott, or, but I think at the end of the general probably be fine. You ask me, I'm, I'm there anyway. I do this meeting, I do the trustee meeting. So, uh, if you want to be, I'll talk to Scott tomorrow, see if you can place a item on the end of the agenda to talk about uh, meals, rooms, alcohol tax. I see where they want to go. I can make it work. I mean, I can find someone that can. I think it would be good to just start the conversation or something else. Just see if we're even on the same page. We can bring this back to the select board as an agenda item for old business and continue a conversation after. Do you think you want to go on Wednesday or not? Well, I, I would like to hear more, um, hear more from our restaurants and uh, hotels and stuff, but your timeline is because they're the ones that it's affecting. Uh, so I think I think we should have another have this on the agenda and my invite people businesses that are gonna affect this and see what their thoughts are. Because if they are absolutely adamant against it, then there's no reason, you know, for us to go full steam ahead with the trustees. I think we should talk to the trustees. I agree with Chris on that. I just don't think with everything going on uh, right now, I think it should wait till after the election. So, but I'm just talking about the 16th. But if these, if these two are going to go to the meeting on the 16th, is it something you would do? I'm to? saying we shouldn't be scheduling with those trustees on the 16th. I know we're trying to force it, and I'm saying we should not force it. So We're not going to force anything. We're just having a conversation. The reason I'm asking is uh, I'm not going to go. Yeah. 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 But what I'm asking is because if the two of them go and you do not go, it doesn't have to be more than it's a sweat. Well, I, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I'm getting at. Yes, I see what you're getting at. Yes. I, I'm trying to work with everybody, but they are insisting on having it the 16th. So if they insist on having it the 16th, then yes, I will go. So how, um, how does that work? So you you got to talk to them, trustees. Uh, Todd and I can work together on this. Okay. We'll talk okay. with the trustees, okay. and um, I will if it needs to be. If it needs to be warned for the select board that I'm going to go to this meeting, I'll warn it on Monday when I get back from vacation. Okay, I have plenty of time. Okay. So, do we need a motion for this, or just no? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Moving on. Number ten. Twenty twenty three proposed edits to Morristown Road policy. Yeah, we can speak to this too if you want to talk this stuff out earlier out of So over the last couple of years, uh, Kevin, myself, and Eric updated the road policy. Uh, you're seeing the track changes and starts on pages. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I'm flipping through right now. Very important package will take this report. Uh, this, there's really some minor changes in there. There's some important ones that, that uh, detailed of how a traffic road is measured with and with, with things like that that Kevin and Eric and I did. This was supposed to be an agenda item, as you can see on the last page, it was approved in 2022. The budget has sucked the life out of this and other things, so the intent, we brought this up before Eric left uh, back in May. So we're trying to get the select board to vote on. The only thing we need select board input on is the dead end roads policy. Previously, our road policy has been suspended for the last four years. Uh, we don't we don't we didn't take dead end roads. The select board suspended that for Howard Menage on the Jersey Way Part 2 development. And since then we've taken other dead end roads. We've taken Belanger Lane's a new road, for example. The policy does not speak kind of the dead end roads. Dead end roads do not serve public purpose. Judy and I aren't going to drive in the dead end road unless we're on the street road. Private public roads are roads that provide a uh, point A to point B, other than someone who's living there. So the policy view this is private roads, that's been suspended. So we're still in limbo through the what do we do with that end roads? So that's the one thing I need feedback on. Other than that, I'm going to use a couple changes. 
Do we, do we get in, in any trouble because we've already done dead end roads if we change the policy? We've changed it both ways before. Correct. You're going to get more dead end roads after we comply with the town roads this year. So you want to save the expense of dead end roads are, as Kevin can explain, hard to maintain. If you get in there, you clear the cul de sac, there is a cul de sac, or find a way to turn around or turn on private property, fix their lawns in the spring, and then get the equipment out, and you're not really plowing in the way back out. It's much easier to maintain a connected street that's an existing built of town specs in this. Some of these dead end roads that don't fit more, some of the dead end roads that are you plow are currently substandard and difficult to plow, which we'll get to in another agenda. And we would basically grandfather the ones that were already doing it now. It's up to you all. Yes, you could. Yeah, if you're already town road, you have to make a motion to remove it from the list. Mm -hmm. Which we'll talk about later, too. All right. Do you want to speak to this? What? Kevin Rose, I was superintendent. So as Tom's stating, most dead end roads, obviously the biggest thing for us is the turnaround in the wintertime of block. Um, where we dump the snow. If there's no cul-de-sac deeded to us for our turnaround area or snow dump area, we end up using town funds to go back and clean all that up in the springtime. Because it's not our property, it's personal, personal property. So we're maintaining private property's land to maintain a road that's a dead end that we don't have a needed access to turn around. In. And if I turn around in somebody's driveway and it has to be blacked off, and I crush through, crush it through with my hand or my grader, I am now replacing black off. So Tom, just for clarification, on um, having been on DRB, we were requiring. Turnarounds, correct? When correct, yes. And the new developments, everybody that had a dead end would require. Correct. But um, new developments under the old rules still weren't going to be town road because it was a dead end road. We went and accepted through roads. The roads provide a public okay. purpose. Public can drive to the grocery store, can drive to the police station, can drive to okay. another public purpose. So, so we didn't accept dead end roads here. We do require the turnarounds, but yes, but we weren't. This policy did not accept dead end roads before. That's been suspended. We're in limbo for four years. We're trying to get new direction on the policy. So I'd love you to accept the rest of the changes okay. and get guidance tonight. What do you want us to do with dead end roads? So Kevin and I, I'm the scribe, I write this stuff. We didn't ask for the dead end road suspension. It was done politically, the select board did it, and we're still in limbo four years later. Okay. So another question for Kevin. Um, the, uh, before your, uh, that, uh, we talked about Jersey Way. And um, the fact that the um, storm drain system had been, uh, had been an issue or a concern. And these private dead end roads, uh, that's what you, what you take over is both above and below. The road, I guess, in that point. Yes, so that's, at this point right now, it is, this would change that so that we would no longer be responsible for any underground right. um, structures or drainage. The storm drain would be on them, not us. Okay. On all dead end roads? On any roads we take over in the future. Take over in the future, okay. Which includes annual fees. We're paying annual fees right. for these dead end roads and smaller roads that are subdivisions to DEC right now. Hundreds of dollars a year for each road. So the dead end road policy is still in here, number nine. Well, I don't know. I don't need direction. You guys take it. The select, we'll sorry, to tonight to that. Yes. I would love you to revert back to the policy before you suspended it from four years ago. That would make it much easier for me. Uh, but that's, I think Kevin would appreciate that too. Uh, but it's your, your your policy, you changed it. It's okay. a different board. We're just bringing up your attention. We have a suspended policy and we're still don't know what to do with it. Okay, because that's not, that's not blind out. So we have to make that a, a different... Um, uh, you're going to use revert back to the prior policy for the dead end roads. Dead end roads shall not be town roads, is basically what it said. Okay. That's what was on the books here for years. We suspended it for the Minoff development, and it's been unsuspended. It's been unsuspended. The dead end road provision has been suspended for the years since then. We're taking in more dead end roads now, <clears throat> which we weren't trying to do because dead end roads take time. They require more manpower, which requires more access. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to figure out how it works. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we revert um, back uh, 
Never mind, back to the previous policy, which unsuspends dead end yep. roads. And then, then accept the other changes as written. And accept the other changes as written. Yeah. Yeah. Second with the other changes? I'll second that. Um, that discussion? I just want to make sure that everybody has gone through and read this document so that the other changes um, everyone is aware of. Do you have anything specific you want to point out? No, but I okay. just, just really do that now. So I'll make sure that everybody's gone through this. Make sure that um, it refers to the past the new policy. Um, it talks about um, different standards for different uh, types of roads. I just think that I uh, want to make sure that. Tom, this would take it back to um, Tom. Take it. Um, we go back to 18 as opposed to the 24 foot line. Uh, the, the road set up for our urban roads, our village roads, was variable before. Uh, the select board, because of CCS's proposal about traffic supply, uh, made a motion one night to increase our lane width to 12 feet. 12 feet is a larger lane width that's on Interstate Highway. That's our lane width for the village. A small little uh, small little roads in the village are being built right now, being built at 12 feet wide of pavement, of pavement for each lane, yeah. which is more expensive, increases housing costs, and when it comes to us, it's more stormwater fees, and it's more to maintain, it's more to pay. We're wasting money doing this. So. So, and is this number two? I just want to make sure. Yes, yeah, so we shouldn't pay for the road with the broad bush. Some are big roads that need to be wider to provide no traffic flow. Mm -hmm. Some are little small dead end roads that don't need to be wider. Mm -hmm. Little neighborhood roads that were Brooklyn Heights, for example. Brooklyn Heights is eight feet travel lanes. And we're not even we're suggesting larger than this, but perfectly adequate for Brooklyn Heights. The yeah. fire trucks can get in. The yeah, Denny is no problem in the Brooklyn Heights. We don't plow it, but that's an example of an eight foot lane. This says nine to one, nine to twelve. Can you tell you what under uh, section C number nine? I mean number um, two to twelve. Number two, I believe. Page thirty-five. Yeah, you're, you're basically reverting back to the build cross section too. The select board made, made a bunch of suspensions on this policy, and they've been out there for years. We're trying to go back to either you can, if you want to formulate a new policy and a new blaze a new way forward, that's fine. We're trying to this is a mess. We're trying to fix it. So I just want to be clear on the dead end roads. We've got edits in here, so so our our new dead end road policy will be what it says. Will be what it said before. So the dead end that's not written out from here is the dead end road piece because I didn't know what you wanted to do. So I just left the margin note. You're reverting back. Laura's motions revert back to the old policy, which I go around my office in two minutes if you like. All right. Yes, I'd love yep. to okay. see you that. Two seconds. Seconds. Rather than trying to convert. 
Can they hear us? Nope. Nope. So uh, audio is, uh, there's a cord that GMA TV is going to have to look at. And if we've had issues with it in the past. So GMA TV is aware. And my computer is turned around and people just need to talk really loud. Oh, okay. I have more printing. That's one for the chair right now. I'll read it for the record. Uh, the previous policy. The select board has determined that accepting dead end roads is contrary to the public good, and only roads that provide access to a through street shall be accepted as town highways. The select board shall only make exception to this dead end road acceptance prohibition when said road provides a public purpose, such as a primary access to public property or valuable recreation amenities, or for dead end roads created by the construction of the truck route. So we don't take dead end roads unless it's a public purpose. There is something at the end of it that serves the public. That was, that's what the large motion includes. So, in terms of moving this along, would you be willing to kind of walk down through this whole road policy and just speak to the changes just so that the public on board? Sure. I might need Kevin to do some of this too, but the other of us can do it. Yep. He'll be right back. Can you say it, please? So number two, uh, the first change, it says easements in there. Uh, the town has recently required snow easements, snow, like snow, uh, snow storage easements or dead end roads, and we couldn't re recover the cost of that. So we're putting in there, except it's expensive, there's an easement needed, the applicant pays for it, we don't pay for it. So that's a keeper. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, number six, we're clarifying the town shall not be responsible for maintaining the road stormwater system or reserving the cost of associated State stormwater fees. That's the real money every year. Okay. We'll plow, but it's not our stormwater system. Uh, class four road maintenance, and just add, it just ties in the new select board of class four road policy. Number seven. Uh, number nine, I just read you the new policy, the, the old policy. We don't accept that in road unless it's a public purpose at the end. The select board can make that exception if there's a viable public entity at the end of that. So I think of some significant dead end roads like. Lagoon Road. It's existing. But it has, that would be a dead end road. Right? Correct. You yes. wouldn't necessarily accept it. We're talking generally about new roads. There is a part, there's a part here which gets to the next part of doing existing roads. It's on the agenda for later. But the, uh, the policy you change it to is the roads have to have five houses on and get a thousand feet long for to stay dead end road. Because I think there was some sort of calculation there of the tax dollars received on a road. Is it valuable enough to plow? If it's one house on a seven uh, three hundred foot road, it's not going to town plow, it's a plow, to plow service. But the, the point you had in there was five houses was more public than private. Right. And the previous policy was a dead end road, just not a public road, it doesn't have a public purpose. It serves a private purpose of somewhere, but it doesn't serve. I'm not getting the grocery store that way, I'm not getting to the river that way, I'm not getting to work that way. But with Laura's motion, it could become a public road, a town road. Which one? With, with her motion, yeah, the dead end would, no, would not become town. We're going back to what? Unless, unless the select board deems the public purpose at the end. Okay. Such as a recreational area. So, for example, the dead end road that goes to the town forest. Isn't that a little dead end road right there? Yeah. That would obviously, with Brian Hall, that's town road now. That obviously has a, has a public purpose. There's a reason for the public to drive that road. It's not just a five lot subdivision. It's a private home. It doesn't affect the current dead end road. No. Not, not unless you make a separate motion. You have to talk. Yeah. If you want to talk about sub existing dead roads or Magoon Road, you have to make that separate motion, go through the hearing process, and try to downgrade it or, or make it private. I mean, that's not what we're talking about. I understand all that grandfathering. I understand that. I'm thinking your road, too. Uh, yeah. road. Okay. So, I mean, these roads are going to get created in the future with not just two or three or five homes, but in your case, I mean, both of you guys are on that road, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you that that's a pretty substantial. Yeah, this policy says new roads, dead roads created, will have a thing in their deeds that shall not be a public road because they're not serve a public purpose. That's what this policy says, and it's what it used to say. Yeah. Which then the association takes it over, which you know. But the, the developer does that full knowing well it's going to be a private road. Yeah. 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 I can say that. Certainly, my road and other roads, they didn't have the uh, class four standards, so things weren't put in. 
are not up to what the standard was for permits, which is why we're having problems on some of these roads. So, given where we are now, the new developments we put in roads uh, to to meet the spec, so there wouldn't be the. Well, if it's problems. a dead end road, they would create the road however they want to create it. It wouldn't, yeah, become, it would, yeah. it wouldn't become a town highway. That's true. Um, 16 feet uh, 16 feet wide pass along all seasons. Right. So yeah. the yeah. fires fire and mm -hmm. the, you know yeah. to get there. And that's what you did earlier with the naming the road. You, at the road, you give the developer name the road, you give the indication. Does this serve a public purpose? Is, should this be built to town road standards or does it not? And then they can go with 16 feet wide. So the developer has a big choice there to make with the road, material, gravel, stormwater sizing, all of those things go into the width of the road. It's an important decision. That's the indication you need tonight for Walker's Way. It was a private road and it doesn't mean, it didn't provide a public purpose and it doesn't meet town standards, so they're free to build a 16 feet and not build to 20 feet plus two foot uh, shoulder on each side. Yeah, Going on to the next page, we talked about number nine, I just read that. Mm -hmm. On number two, we're reverting back to the old cross section, which gave some variability uh, versus a smaller road versus a bigger road. And we did the select more changes for the CCS development of a practice plot, which is coming forward by the way, going forward by the way, I'll see that in the next month or two. So by change, this is a good change. This is a good change. Okay. You can't have one, one size fits all for roads. All roads are different. I mean, we're basically building everything to more than high, more than interstate yeah. highway lane roads. And that's okay, some roads need to be wide for plows. Some roads are a little neighborhood roads that you don't want that wide. Can we agree? Yes. Number three, private road minimum specs. This is Kevin's thing where we're, we didn't say we measured before, it, was, it wasn't clear. We're saying measure from the outside edge of the roadside dishes. So we're providing a measure for the first time. <laughs> Next page, uh, number seven, we're upgrading our culvert size, which basically complies with the state. The state uh, requires at least 18 inches. We're doing 24 and 18. And this policy, our road policy, is a town shall install. We haven't installed, installed driveway culverts people for a long time. This says oversee. This is an important policy change. Yes. It's a private yes. driveway. The taxpayer shouldn't be paying for that culvert. It's a private driveway culvert. And this, this would allow for non steel plastic culverts. Correct. Our old, our old administrator, not administrator, sorry, highway superintendent wanted everything steel, not plastic, and Kevin is thinks plastic is so just as viable. Just for clarification, because I have an issue with my neighborhood on this. They would have to be permitted, driveway culverts would have to be permitted. Is that true? That there was talk about it would be permitted with your driveway. So if you needed a, a culvert at the time you applied for your driveway permit, uh -huh. I would go out and look at that and say, yes, you need X yeah. this size culvert. And I see the high culvert. And I ask yes. the paperwork, we do it every we do it together. Okay. Yeah, we do it all the time. Thank you. To Tuesday. Yes. I'll okay. do it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. It'll be Tuesday. Paperwork tomorrow. Okay. Um, Moving on to number eight, uh, this is just clarifying the existing access permit process and saying the zoning should not issue an access permit without prior consult consultation with the highway superintendent, that's what we do every day. We're just clarifying that. Number nine, our previous highway superintendent didn't want more than one access point for parcel. We're deleting that, we're okay with that. If someone wants to abort your driveway, that we can handle it. Uh, number 12, we're installing for the first time, we're just providing a width. For driveway parking areas, for a driveway, and that's it. Those are your changes. I have a question about yes. back to the first page, number six. Is the town shall not be responsible for anything that shows the road stormwater system or building the possibly associated state stormwater fees? So the homeowners are going to be responsible. The homeowners association has. Yes. yes. Oh, this is only, only in this. This isn't clear though. This doesn't state your development. This and, or you're in a uh, dead end. This sounds to me like they, I could be responsible for it in my on my road. That's what it says. To me. When the DR, when the when the I don't create roads as a ZA, the DRB creates roads. Uh -huh. So when there's a road created, either, either it's going to be a town road or even before it's a town road, the rest of the HOA, even the developer's going to take care of it. And they say that and we condition it as such. That's the DRB saying. Yeah, or the or the there's an HOA set up to care for the road until the town takes it over. So this is just saying like. For example, take Jersey Way, the existing Jersey Way development. Mm -hmm. uh, we took the road over, but we also took the stormwater. We're saying we're not doing that anymore. So not only right now we're talking about a couple hundred thousand dollar stormwater system fitting it back in the neighborhood for the new um, lake stream plant stormwater rules, we're also paying DEC hundreds of dollars a year for our 
triangle and maintenance permit for that stormwater system. And that gets back to greater public good, what should the taxpayer bear, what shouldn't they bear. But that's more of a that neighborhood cost. The HOA should pay for that. That shouldn't be that Joe taxpayer lives on George Street or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or Sterling Valley Road. Okay. Okay. No one's ever seen a mistake that was made to Jersey Way. Yes. We're trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Was there wasn't stormwater issues, fees and so on and so forth, I think when that development went in. This was a this is a new problem. Correct. And those stormwater fees aren't going down, they're gonna go through the roof. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Do you have a motion? No. Um, yes, Laura has a motion. And Chris second. I, think it's still I don't know if we have a second. Yeah, Chris, Chris second. Chris second. second? Okay, yep. so we've done our discussion. I just All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So the 2023 proposed edits to the Morristown Road policy referring back to the Old Town policy. Just for number nine, yeah. For the current provisions and revert back to number nine. Okay. Three. Number 11, planning council letter regarding downgrading to the standard town roads. You guys are up again. You want to do it? You want me to do it? Okay, yeah. sweet. I think we're making a motion now, yeah. What page went on here? I'm page 38. 38. So, building on the road discussion we just had, in this policy, which I'll go back to, the select board has never done. This is I mean, this is the select board's policy. The planning council through me writes the policy because we're the ones who write things. Uh, the select board has to adopt this, which you just did with the adopted many times before. Um, in number 11, so page 35, the existing town road network shall be reviewed by the select board in consultation with the village and town road form in at least every five years to determine if dead end roads do not serve a public purpose should be downgraded or discontinued. Uh, the highway superintendent met with the planning council two weeks ago now, week and a half ago. We came up with a list of roads that this policy has never been acted on, that uh, given everything on all the budget, and there were certain roads that were plowing and already used. So we're trying to tighten up what roads we're actually putting in the plow list. The plow list is pretty sticky for lack of a better explanation. Once you're on it, you're on it. It's kind of like the social service thing. Tell me it's sticky. Once you're on it, you're on it. I mean, so some of the roads on this list in this letter on page 38 are ones that map to dairy farm. When you're a dairy farm, you have one house in the road. You plow it because the cows need to be milked and the milk needs to go out. It hasn't been a dairy farm for generations. We're still plowing that road. We're, in effect, that's Lampier Road. Sorry, Joni, but we're providing plow, a private plow service for Lampier Road and Joni's mother who was on that road. Just because it used to be a dairy farm. It hasn't been a dairy farm for. <coughs> 30 years, 40 years, we're still fine because it used to be a dairy farm. Uh, there's roads on this list in the letter. Um, what's the one on uh, Stanford? Cloverdale. Cloverdale, we plow it, it's not used. We're fine with it, drop the farm on that are going to use it, go a different round of property. We plow it because it's on the list, it's a town road. So there's certain things on here where if we drop the roads on this list that don't meet our standards, that are small roads that really should be applied to or private roads and really should be a private plow company. We're going to save twenty thousand dollars a year at that fee rates. And there's a letter go out to the people on that. You have to have a call. You have to have a hearing. So you don't need like oh, when you okay. change a road, like you did West High Street recently. You have a public hearing. You have a hearing on site. You come back and vote on afterwards. You have to have one for each of these roads. You can't act in this time, but you can start the process. Or you can decide not to. It's up to you. This is your your roads, your list. But your policy says it's every five years. It's never been reviewed. And given everything going on right now, and given some of the the waste that we see the roads that get on the list and never leave, that should be publicly named, privately maintained, not publicly. I think it's time to look at it. Okay. Planning Council. So, what, on a so we, this is just inf information for us to be putting on an agenda, and we have to go and visit each of these roads? You have to formally do something, yes. The Planning Council basically asked in the letter, um, given the town's present budget situation, the Council suggests a select board begin the section B11 review process stipulated in the town road policy. To review the town maintenance of these aforementioned substandard roads this summer, we begin the process now because the residents of these roads are time need to find private plow services for the winter. The select board says not to discontinue the town service and these substandard dead roads. The planning council asks that section B9 of the town road policy be updated to reflect the criteria the select board used to make this decision. So either you kind of discontinue the roads or a substandard <coughs> road update policy we just, we just talked about to say why you're keeping these roads. There should be some sort of policy on what's in the plot, what should be plot. Right now, once you're on the list, you're on the All right. 
So what I'm saying is, is we have to put this back on the agenda. You just put each road, yes. Each road has to be visited or we just decide on our own. Correct. Open hearing for each, yes. Hearing for each road. And I mean, for the record, the roads on the list are Paul Road, Chapey Road, Clover Hill Road, Fair Road, Magoo Road, Lampier Road, Ledge Road, Neal Road, Rooney Road, Ross Hill, Samuset Road, Stearns Road, Sandridge, Stubtown Road, Time to Key, Juan J. Farm, and Wyman Road. Some of these are like Stub Ridge. They don't want our services. We're plowing anyway. They don't want us there. They want to do it themselves. But we're plowing it. It's on the list. So we need help from you all to do that. All right. Do you think that we could actually do these all in one night? It'd be a long night. <laughs> it's a night's been. <laughs> you're supposed to have a hearing on site, so you have to be driving around for oh, a Yeah, you can't hours. do it. You can't do it just a couple oh, hours. No, no, no. Put it on site. No, yeah. You have to do on site, you have to hearing on site, and then you come back and vote after a certain amount of days. I forget exactly how it's done. It's not my mm -hmm. process. It's a process. A it's a process. We yes. did it for West Hill Road. Yeah, West, uh, West, West High. Yeah. So it's something that's setting up and kind of organizing the roads like at a club or something so that we can build. So yeah. Tom, yeah. if we write, we would need to write letters to all the property work. Generally, you do, yes. It's a certified so, letter that I sent out. Yeah, generally the administrative assistant, administrator or administrative assistant comes to my office, I print out the butter letters, and you guys send the letter out the advice list I create. That's so generally what you do for road, yes. We're having a hearing on the visit. And some of these roads are just because one house, like the Lagoon Road, there's one house on. It's been one house for years. That's a road opposite more so more works. And we're filing in, it's like a private file, which you're probably not. Okay. So it's a twenty thousand dollar bill um, for plowing, grading, the through pavement. So there are some roads that are pavement there too. We'll be there at some point too. So it's up to you how you want to move forward. But and the pavement, the pavement, we wouldn't do anything. You, no, you're you're out of it going forward. You're out of grading. You're out of gravel. You're out of everything. Okay, so we need to. It won't be very popular with people on those roads, obviously. Right. But some roads are expecting it. Some roads actually, like Stubtown, they want this to happen. Okay, so how do we, what's the, what are we, the process works? We'll bring it back to the board um, at some point and we'll set up. I mean, you'll have to go out and drive around and look at these roads, I'm guessing. Yeah, but we have to have, yeah, yeah. You have to decide what you want to do first. Okay. And then if you decide, we can bring it back for another discussion so you can kind of swallow everything they just said to us. Um. And you can kind of get an idea of what these roads look like. And then if you decide you want to go forward with that, we'll set up, I'll set up these hearings in clumps where you could do maybe a couple at a time. Um, but I think my advice would be go out, look at these roads, decide what you want to do, bring it back, make it, you know, have a continued discussion on it. Uh, and then we can go from there. If we, if we make a motion to uh, can, can we make a motion I don't, you don't need a motion. You just, no, I'll just, I'll bring it back as a future discussion. Yeah, just put it on next agenda. Yeah, yeah. But I think Judy's suggestion is very good to go drive around these roads. Like, you want to look at, I walk by Ledge Road every day. Ledge Road is basically, it's this little tiny pull and there are two houses on it and it must take the plow truck a seven point turn to get out of there. And it's not easy to get out of there because these aren't roads that have big cul de sacs. These are little tiny things happening. But we'll still have to do the yeah. Do a, a formal site visit on your Correct. To take formal mm -hmm. action is a statutory process. Okay. But before your next meeting, if you keep on the next agenda, drive through some of these roads, and I think you'll see what Kevin's talking about. I mean, okay. It's pretty straightforward when you actually see the roads. Yeah. You want me to bring this back September 21st, folks? Yes? Yes. yes. September or uh, yeah. August? I mean, August. August. Don't mind me. August 21st. Yes? Okay. All right, moving on to number 12, 2023 edits to joint rules, policy governing here, the county council. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure which hat this is. So, Tom Cloutier suggested some edits. And when Tom had the edits, Tom's edits were yellow in their packet, and everyone's packet is yellow. Tom wanted the select board and trustee members shall not be eligible to serve on jointly appointed boards. And jointly appointed board three members are prohibited serving another select board and trustee jointly appointed boards and committees. Um, while Tom was updating this, I made a couple other small language changes, like the subordinate changes, which I, mean, I wrote this, I mean, probably wasn't the best choice of words going back and looking at it later. And I also, Christy Smith provides some comments. I also made a couple edits for her as well, some language changes and clarifications. So, uh, very minor changes. The Tom's change in yellow really is the bigger change here, and you can speak to that. Everything else is more housekeeping. Yeah. And this is something.
Yeah, we've been talking about it for over a year. Correct. Yeah. And you note that if you wanted to create a joint charter committee, this comes into play with the select board and trustee route. So I'll think about that. Well. Um, Sarah, can I ask you, um, term limits, I believe, is something that you have to be a charter uh, governance for. Yeah. I don't know. Because that was talk that's been talked about. Yeah. And you, it's not relevant for here. You can put that in this rules if you want to. So these rules, so the select board, no offense, is lots of turnover. I'm here for many, many years. You guys kind of come and go. And so the appointments and the handling of the DRB, the DRB and planning council in Morrisville and Morristown is very unique because we operate as a joint board, but we're not officially a joint board. Because we have great, uh, we cooperate well with the village here. But they still have the same role in the planning and zone process you do. As you know, they approve the town. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. So, uh, Todd, is it page 39 that has the yellow? Yellow, yes. So, I still don't think it's right. The wording, um, I brought it up at the last time we discussed this. So, the way that I read that is select board and trustee members shall not be eligible to serve on a jointly appointed board. That means we, trustees and select board members, can't serve on the DRB or the planning council. But then it says, and jointly appointed board and committee members are prohibited from serving on other select board and trustee jointly appointed boards and committees. That means Which is Christy, the DRB and the planning council. That means, no, it's, it's to be the charter committee. I think jointly appointed. So if they form a charter committee to do expand the village and do the charter, you can't serve as a DR, sitting DRB member. The select board can't serve on any other appointed boards, and you can't serve on other appointed boards either, the way that's written. So what you're saying is serve on the volunteer can't. We can't serve on 
So one of us could sit on the the charter committee. If you vote this through, that's way it's written. My opinion is you couldn't have a select board rep or a trustee rep on the charter committee. And what about like you know the housing committee? Is uh, upper half of the that, that one's just a select board committee. It's not jointly appointed. Okay, but the way I read it is that CRB and Planning Council members are not prohibited in this from serving on select board and trustees. That's how I'm reading it. Correct. You could be a DRG member and a select board member, as Gary Nolan was. So the way this is written. Okay, you can't be a select board member. And right. I didn't. I yeah, thought the intention was to kind of yeah, stop that. No, no, you can't. So select board and trustee shall not be able to serve a jointly appointed board. So if you decide to graduate from the DRB plan as a select board, you have to give up your DRB or planning seat. Yeah. You can't be on the board. Yeah, sorry. So select board member shall not be able to serve. So you have to make a choice. If you want to be a select board, like as Laura did, Laura's in the DRB until she sat around for select board and she became on select board and then she dropped the DRB seat. Actually, dropped the DRB seat first. I guess it was, it, it was a little unclear to me that it doesn't kind of say the, that people on jointly appointed boards cannot serve on the select board and trustees. I mean, I don't know. To me, the language just seems a little muddy. Fair comment. Not my language. Okay. I just write this stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is Tom's language. The other point that you brought up was just that the previous morning, um, um, the local option tax committee, what this is saying is that a select board and trustee member can't serve on the committee. Well, if, if you have a joint one between you and the trustees, yes. If you decide to do your own charter, you can still serve on your own charter committee as a select board member, but you can't do a joint one if you adopt this. My personal opinion, and I'm not a select board, I didn't vote on this, but is I would not vote in support of anything that would disadvantage a community member of our community from serving in that capacity here. And I feel like this does. And I remember the last conversation we had was about people from out of town serving on our committees and, and you know, if we don't have enough people to serve, allowing people from other communities to come in and serve on ours. And to me, it's just, we're not addressing that. We're just disadvantaging our community members from being able to participate. Thank you. That is where this conversation began last year, with just that discussion. And I guess I know I made the comment that it seems like there's a lot of intent, and it's just to encourage more participation, more people on these committees, to not then allow people the same person to sit on multiple committees. I would agree, and there was there was uh, potential, especially somebody that's sitting on the DRB and select board. There's just conflicts of interest. So then, having you know, when they have to recuse themselves, that's just a disadvantage. Instead of having all five members, you have four. So that was what that was. Um, and I agree to uh, just to open up more seats so the more voices to me are always the most important. I do have concerns if we have a specialty, a very specialized situation where there's uh, like a charter, uh, something that was, a, you know, there's it's a way to put in an exception for highly specialized, limited, you know. Um, Board, boards that are, don't exist in perpetuity. So if you want to write in a sentence. Temporary. Yeah. If you want to write in a sentence about temporary joint appointment, appoint the board shall be exempt from this policy, that would cover your village and town charter committee effort, something like that. But if this isn't my language, this is Tom's language, so I don't want to speak for yeah. Tom. The only other thing I was thinking, I mean, you're right, Todd, the way this is written, we can't sit on that. I just want to make sure you get that before you vote on it. No, I agree. There could be ad hoc, non voting members of that committee who could still appoint one of us to be on that committee for discussion purposes. Okay. Or if we put in a line saying, with the exception of a, a temporary. Yeah, I like the word temporary. Yeah, because I, I think something that's that important that a select board, an elected person should have to on it. Um, and if it's a short term, that's my thoughts. But I don't, you know, again, I don't agree with long term uh, positions where it could be on both the DRB or, um, you know. DRB and the trustee or DRB and uh, select. I just really gotta take the more seats we have available with that. So, the beginning of this could change. The select board and trustee members shall not be able to serve a joint employee board unless temporary. And joint way of appointing board 
and committee members are per credit in less than seven program. Yeah. Uh, you you don't have to make this general language. You make it specific. You could just eliminate from the point of boards and say the planning council. Oh, and that would be it. And then we avoid any other future boards. And if something did long term come about, I don't know what it would be, but you could simply add it or revise the language later. That's a good suggestion. Todd, is the Conservation Commission only appointed by us? Only town. Yeah, that's much cleaner, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, so when they select board of trustees, DRB and planning, would it be those four? Those are the four big boards, yes, yeah. in town. And those, that's, that's my concern of having shared seats on those. Yes. Yes? Oh, you wrote it? How many of us have it? Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. the other intent was, look how you people speak, please tell us. Right. Look how high the people work on the budget and can now spend the fee on another door. That's not, that's, 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 a, that's a, it for an individual to decide. Uh, uh, a lot of it's not just because we wanted to give you at least, you know, enough time to, to, uh, to vote to whatever board you're on. But anyway, yeah, they vote for all this stuff. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. You're right. I mean, that has been the intent of the conversation all right way along. Yeah. yeah. So, if we change the two select board and trustee members shall not be eligible to serve on the BRB or planning council. Well, I think that would. Yeah. Yeah. Temporary thing going. Did you want to speak? The temporary would be unnecessary. It okay. wouldn't be necessary to put the word temporary in. Yeah. I shall not have or I'm going to need permission to speak, but um, it, when you should make the statement that select board and trustees can be on DRB or planning, you also need to add planning and trustees can't be on the select board as well. It would give you precipitate both directions. Is that what you were saying, Yes. Okay. Yeah, it just wasn't. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. okay, yeah. I would agree with that. So, um, who's going to write the third line? It's not going to write it. Okay. No. 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 I wasn't lost track, but I'll resend just in case. Okay. So the motion on the floor was done by Don McDowell to accept the edits and the changes. Laura Streets seconded that motion. So Don McDowell. I will rescind my motion. Thank you. I need to resend my second. Oh, it's rescinded. It's rescinded. It's rescinded. Can we start over, folks? You can all thank me tomorrow. <laughs> Is there any motion to be made? Yes. Are you going to write it on the language? Yeah, I'm going to tweet the language. It's clear that it's, it's both ways, vice versa, Christie's point and Kevin's point, yes. Okay. And I'll change the language from jointly appointed for that one clause, that one rule, to specifically planning and DRB. So is this for another time or is this for tonight? I think it's pretty clear. It's up to you all. So what will happen is Todd will make the change. You can you can accept the mo you can make a motion to accept the changes that Todd's going to be making. Right, yeah. That piece of paper will come to you for signatures. If it doesn't say on it what you want it to say, you don't have to sign up. Yes, please. So I'll make a motion that we accept um, the changes that Todd is writing up for us. Uh, on the rules of procedure to what they appointed in two words. Is there a second? I, I can second it. The motion is second. Any discussion? I just think that we can do um, it right now. I don't think it's all that problematic. Trying to do. Well, it's not like yeah, what you said was perfect. I mean, it's in, in, in 
your tax package. It's signed by you and the trustees. Stop and signed by the charitable board. So at the next meeting, there'll be Judy will have to sign this. And it's not exactly what you think it is. We'll call me back in here. We'll do this all over again. But it should be exactly what you're saying. So you can make a motion to approve it as, as discussed tonight. And then Judy's just going to sign off on the paperwork at the next meeting. And then I think that once I get Judy to sign it, I do it for the trustees for the next meeting. Okay. I think it would be helpful to have clear intent about that section there. Motion. So you want to wait to the point? No, I think we can move on tonight. Just as Laura makes this motion, I think that it should at least refer to the fact that um, if you're serving as a select board member, trustee, you are not able to serve on the DRD planning council. That's the intent. So the intent is part of the motion. We accept the motion as amended. As amended. Chuck Laura wants to amend it to yes. what Chris said. Yes. Um, yes. Well, I don't have to repeat it. I think that's a good idea. Yep. Yep. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed to amending. All right, so old business. Any old business? No. Okay, uh, approved warrants. I am looking to approve warrants. Second. Okay, we'll second a um, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on, department head reports. Any department heads? Hasn't announced that before? Yes. Sarah Haskins, town clerk. I just want to let everybody know that ballots were mailed out on Friday for the uh, special meeting on August 29th. Be on the lookout. Um, if you don't have one by next Monday, let me know. If you get one by mistake, let me know. If you have questions about the election, let me know. Mine arrived today, so they are coming. Mm. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. I noticed the ballots today were mailed out standard mail with return with return address uh, requested. So it's mailed out standard mail. It could take up to 10 days to get it. You know that, right? Okay, so because it's third class mail. So I was wondering why it was mailed out that way. It should have been mailed out first class mail. And what was the savings? How much was the savings between first class mail and standard mail? I don't have any answers to that. I'd have to look into it. I hired a mailing company to mail it, as was advised by um, the Secretary of State's election office. It's what they do. It's what um, most towns that are mailing their ballots do. And I took the advice from the state. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. Um, any other partners who would like to speak? Just uh, one quick thing for the police department. On um, Saturday, August 12th, uh, there's going to be an active shooter training at People's Academy. There'll be Heavy police presence in town starting at 7 a.m. We should be ready. It'll be about 30 police officers or so. This Saturday, the 12th, People's Academy. Yep. We're planning on putting something out on Thursday. Thank you.
So a few things. So next Monday, August 14th, is going to be a special meeting, select board special meeting, uh, in regards to the town manager discussion. Right now we have two town We are working on one more person trying to get them to come as well. Uh, we'll start at 5.30 p.m. right here in this room. Uh, we're in the TA office right now, so it doesn't name all of them, just name uh, working with Kevin. Actually, process down to do one with Pitt. Uh, the Oxbow Park was a FEMA project that was flooded. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Percy's got that bid. They've been down there last week, and they're down there today. They should be wrapped up tomorrow. I didn't talk to them this afternoon, but Kevin's on his head. So I think Recording stopped. Recording in progress. The actual parking lot needs to be resurfaced with gravel. Uh, we took the contractor took all the materials that was in the field and put it back in the parking lot, but it's still sandy and it's just not. It, it's not a. We're worried about a tractor trailer, a truck turning around down there, or a truck and just getting stuck. So it really needs to be top coated with about six inches of gravel, which, due to our current financial state, we don't have that money, so we aren't going to spend it. So the pits or the uh, park is going to remain closed at this point. Um, the other ones, the Walton Road Bridge, we're working on that with the contractor and Tyler Mumley. We should have some more information about that next select board meeting. And then Tyler Mumley as well. Uh, the Jersey Way stormwater system improvements, which is, was a discussion last year at the select board with the HOA issue up there. Uh, there's going to be a Zoom meeting in September that whoever the interim TA is at that point is going to need to attend because the state's put a little bit of pressure on us to move forward on this. So uh, we kind of got that at bay right now, uh, but there is going to be a meeting in September about that. Is that going to be a meeting for us here? Or no, it's, it looks like it's just through the whoever the interim town administrator would be and Tyler. Okay. And I don't think it's going to come back here probably to, to maybe the first or second meeting in September. Okay. That's, that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Select board comments. Laura, do you want to start? I, I think I'm good. Thank you. Chris, do you want to? Um, we, uh, we have a contract with an individual um, for the cemetery as a, a sexton position, and it's expi expired on June 30th. And uh, I asked for a copy of the contract, and I think that um, there's some things that I'd like to um, discuss with a few cemetery partners, uh, present here with the North Town Cemetery Association. So I'd like the board of permission to um, talk with uh, the two, two associations to develop a clear, clear contract with uh, Saxon's position and bring that back to the group. You can give a head nod as to whether or not you want. Chris, at some point, I 
I would like to see in that conversation with some of the data or flow flow that comes from my office. I know just before steps on just uh so people at home know um part of this um so a couple of things. Um, first of all, thank you to Percy and the town for getting out to folks in the That's another in shape. I do, and uh, I've had several people reach out to me, probably to the other select board members as well. About Putting money into the outflow and I think, you know, heading, heading into the future, this is just a conversation that we need to have is how many times are we going to put money into the outflow? It's flooded out right now four times in the last 12 years. And, um, you know, that's the theme is paying us back, it's great, but that hasn't happened very time. I think that is a conversation we need to have, especially about the lower debt, unless it's a better debt. I think that's.
Thank you. 